guys this is mike at tabletbuy.com and we're here with the two popular tablets available right now on the market on here on the left over here on the left there is the samsung galaxy tab 10.1 and on your right there is the hp touchpad uh, we're going to have a quick look at, the, at these two and compare most of their important aspects first of all let's start with, with them and compare them in terms of size and to have them like this you're going to easily notice that um, the the Samsung is a little bit longer but only a little bit and it's definitely not that wide as the Samsung as the HP touchpad and there is a reason for that going to tell you about uh, that later on and in terms of width it's pretty obvious that the uh, this uh, the Samsung is light uh, light your sticker the thinner actually sorry than the HP touchpad so why the touchpad goes for like 40 millimeters this one measured only like 8.6 millimeters so it's nearly twice as thin as the touchpad and I was telling there is a reason why this one is longer and uh, not that not as wide as this one and that's because of the screen because you can as you can see this one has a wide display the Samsung has a wide display uh, with 10.1 inch uh, in diagonal and 1280 by 800 pixels resolution this one has a 4x3 aspect ratio display similar to the one on, on the iPad and in fact is the same resolution 1024 by 768 pixels and both uh, offer great viewing angles but we're going to talk about them a little bit uh, later now let's uh, have a look on the front side and you're going to notice that the HP touchpad fit, uh, features this home button while this one has no button at, button at all and there are also some cameras 1.3 megapixels on the HP touchpad if, um, if I reckon correctly and 2 megapixel front facing camera on the Samsung but uh, when turning them backwards you're going to notice that the HP has no rear facing camera well, there is a 3.2 megapixel camera on the back with flash. So this one can shoot 720p uh, clips and definitely uh, can shoot some stills. Well, this one can only be used for chatting and video conferences with your friends. Now, having a look at the back and the materials used, this one uses some glossy plastic and it will catch fingerprints and dust and all the stuff it will get damaged scratched quite easily uh, overall it feels quite solid in your hand because it has this nice um, rounded edge edges so it's not that bad and the plastic uh, finish actually offers a bit of grip but in terms it won't be that reliable and of course this one is quite heavy at 1.6 pounds you will feel uh, the difference uh, over the samsung if you especially if you looking for a tablet that you can use with only one hand if this is definitely not the one now getting the Samsung the back is covered in some very nice plastic but it's made it's rubbery and it feels quite nice and offers good grip and the sides they're made from metal aluminum they're silvery and they actually look quite nice now there are some versions that come with the glossy uh, back on the uh, glossy plastic back uh, but I recommend getting this one if you can with the rubbery back it definitely feels cool and uh, in terms of uh, weight this one goes for like 1.7 1.25 pounds so it's the lightest 10, point, 10 inch uh, or 10 inch -ish tablet available right now and it's lighter than the iPad that goes for 1.33 pounds so this is something quite nice and you're going to feel this when trying to use the tablet all, all day and uh, trying to hold it like this with only one thing one hand okay now let's uh, go ahead and see uh, what you get on the sides for both these display devices I'm going to start with the Samsung so on this uh, one you have the on top you have the power button and the volume rocker headphone jack and this is the SIM card because it's a 3G version on this side on the side you have one of the speakers on the bottom you have the microphone and the proprietary docking connection um, and it's used for charging and connecting to a computer as well other side you have the other speaker and that's pretty much all on the touchpad on top you have the headphone jack microphone and uh, you have the 
power button and as you can see buttons are a little bit wobbly and that's the same with this one the volume rocker you have on this side here there is a slot that will tell you the serial number all the information about this tablet a micro HDMI slot on the bottom you can use to connect to a computer and to charge and on this other side you have the uh, the speakers, they're actually great speakers, some of the best you're going to find on a tablet and uh, they're Beats Audio and uh, because of that also the uh, the quality of the sound you get outputted through the, the headphone jack is also superior to the one you find on other tablets. So in terms of ports, they're pretty much the same despite this one being twice as, have, as uh, thick, it's pretty much on par with the Samsung as neither of them offer mini HDMI or any kind of HDMI or an, a card extension however this one has some USB it's micro USB but it's still USB connectivity and for some of the some of you uh, that might be an advantage I was planning to tell you more about the screen of these two tablets like I said both have IPS panels but this one is actually called PLS which is Samsung's take on IPS and the fact is this one brings the same colors and the same viewing angles you usually get on your uh, IPS panel but it also increases brightness so this will be a little bit better when used outside despite the fact that both that it is glossy as the one here but uh, the touchpad is not as bright as the one here and uh, in terms of hardware the touchpad runs uh, on the dual core 1.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Scorpion processor 1 gigabyte of RAM and 16 to 32 gigabyte of uh, of storage plus decent graphics but this one has better graphics it's a Tegra 2 processor uh, 1.1 uh, 1, uh, 1 gigahertz actually um, 1 gigabyte of RAM and 16 32 gigabyte of storage as well uh, in terms of connectivity on the HP you get uh, wireless and you get Bluetooth and you get GPS and this one you also have 3G uh, there is there going to be a 4G enabled version of the HP web of the HP touchpad it's going to come from AT&T but we don't know uh, that many about it right now but uh, on the other hand the Samsung is right now offered with 3G and it's available in a couple of different countries now in terms of uh, operating system this one running webOS 3.0.2 and this one is running Android 3.1 which uh, the with uh, the Samsung uh, TouchWiz UI skin on top, uh, actually, which, which actually offers a couple of extra functions. We're not going to get into many details. Basic uh, point: uh, WebOS has a couple of basic applications that are actually quite nice. Has an excellent browser, an excellent email client that supports multiple accounts, excellent ch excellent chatting client that uh, as well supports multiple accounts, and you can have them all together in one place. You can play. 1080p content actually can play it but only MOV and uh, some uh, mp4 files on the other hand this one can uh, has uh, of course all these uh, applications from Google has maps has Gmail has YouTube app but uh, in terms of video can only play up to 720p content and not uh, that many uh, 720p types of files will actually play flawlessly on this one that's a problem from Tegra uh, they don't uh, support H.264 decoding, hardware decoding should only be solved by Tegra 3 which is the next generation the next generation of this platform but uh, for everyday use uh, this one actually has access to the Android market where you're going to find a bunch of apps and uh, you're going to find actually apps and games and all these pieces of, uh, of software that you might use plus uh, it, since it's running Android you can customize it you have widgets you can have all this uh, all this uh, ways to make this one better suited for your needs which is something quite nice but uh, on the other hand I feel that Android is a little bit uh, difficult more difficult to learn has a slightly steeper learning curve than webOS and then iOS does which is could be a problem for some of the uh, of the first time users and those uh, those of you that are not really in that techy um, now in terms of battery life like expects from 7 to 8 hours around 7 to 8 hours from the HP touchpad and like an hour uh, extra from the Samsung Galaxy Tab so around 9 hours for this one of life during everyday use 
that includes watching content, listening to music, browsing, and all these standard uh, activities. And uh, the bot bottom point, this, despite this one uh, offering a, a little bit extra, they're both, uh, both should be okay for your uh, entire day's work. And this is something, uh, this is what we're actually looking uh, in the tablet right now. And there, uh, then there's the pricing aspect. The Galaxy Tab right now goes for $499, starts at $499, uh, which is for the 16GB Wi-Fi only version. Uh, the HP uh, touchpad initially was sold for $499 uh, for the same 16GB Wi-Fi only version, but then because it didn't get the traction, it uh, was massively discounted and uh, in the last in the last days of August you could find it for only $99 which was actually a great deal so if some uh, those of you guys that got it you were actually quite lucky but uh, in my eyes uh, this one um, it's still a great pick for around 200 maybe 250 bucks otherwise you have better Android options and uh, the problem with it, with it is the fact that you don't have third-party apps. So besides the standard apps, the ones you get by default, you don't have that many others. You don't have games and you don't have widgets and you don't have all this kind of uh, apps that uh, probably a tablet user would need during their everyday activities. But uh, this could be solved probably in the future as uh, there are uh, many guys working on a Honeycomb version that should run on, uh, on the hardware uh, available on the HP touchpad. Okay, so those are pretty much all the things I wanted to show you about these two tablets. For more details you should of course come on the site which is tabletbyte.com and uh, over there you're going to find information about uh, these two tablets and the written comparison of the two plus reviews for each of them and you also find information about all the other tablets available right now on the market and see which one is better and why and which one is the best uh, probably the best pick for you uh, that was it for now mike at tabletby.com with the hp touchpad and the samsung galaxy tab 10.1 if you like our clips and uh, appreciate our work please subscribe and press thumbs up on this clip thank you very much